So as we discussed earlier, in the suprasternal view, you got the uh, arch of the aorta there, and then you just likely get into a more sagittal section, and you will get a beautiful opening of the main pulmonary artery and RPA and LPA. Within the just origin of the LPA, you will get a PDA. The arch of aorta is getting into the descending aorta area, and this beautiful PDA is opened here. You can just um, get the uh, motion picture into static, and then you can measure the PDA as uh, whatever the measurement you will get 1.6 millimeter here it is. Usually PDA according to the dimension is classified as anything which is 1. Point, less than 1.5 is taken as small, 1.5 to 3 millimeter is taken as uh, moderate, and anything more than 3 millimeter is taken as a large PDA. But according to gradients also it will vary and also according to the restrictive and non-restrictive pattern also it will be differentiated into moderate, uh, small and uh, large uh, PDAs. And also according to the dilatation of the pulmonary artery, LA and LV pressure, LA enlargement, LV pressure, also descending aorta flow will also decide the whether there is a, uh, about the, uh, decide about the uh, enlargement or the dimension of the PDA. If there is a descending aorta flow is in the diastole is good enough, there is no reversal of the flow in the diastole because of the suction of the blood inside the PDA because of the non-restrictive na non nature of the PDA then usually you will be getting a diastolic flow reversal also as in the AR you will get a, some amount of diastolic flow reversal in uh, descending aorta and that will sufficiently tell you that the PDA is large enough but for this matter like the dimension matter if it is less than 1.5 it's small and if it is more than 3 it is considered as big PDA.